That's when you love the Lord. <laughs> Didn't he really just... God, if, you, if we think God doesn't have a sense of humor, right? <laughs> um, so I was just going to share something personal that happened with me. Unexpected. You know, sometimes God does things above, beyond what we can ask or think. Things that we don't even think about. We've been talking about how this is a season of newness, new relationships, restoration, reconciliation. Got a friend request from, a Facebook friend request from my birth father that I haven't talked to or quite honestly thought about in 20 years. Followed by his wife, followed by my half-sister, followed by a really interesting weekend of reconnecting with people who, are, I don't really know them, but they're family, right? Yeah. And and I especially am touched by my half-sister. Her name's Carrie. She has always kind of, over the years, tried to reach out a little bit, and she always wanted a big sister. And so her and I have always had kind of just a special connection. Haven't talked to her since I was 16. And we got married on the exact same day. Wow. Michael and I got married the same day she did. She goes, you know, I saw your uh, marriage in that, because we were talking about just pictures, you know. Um, I said, your, your, your wedding looks sweet. Look, it was a beautiful day. She says, you know, I saw your wedding announcement in the Record Herald, too, and we got married on the exact same day. Wow. And I said, well, that's just one more thing to connect us, yeah. you know. And, and I feel like that, that's special to me, but that was so special to her. Yeah. And God does that. Yeah. God does that. And things that we don't think about, it, I think this, this is a fulfillment, not necessarily longing of my heart, because I don't really know them, but I know that Carrie has always wanted a big sister. Mm -hmm. And I know that my birth father, Neil, has always wondered how I'm doing and how I am and how, if everything's okay. And it's, I, I don't know how many of you know my, my family situation, but it's complicated. <laughs> I'm adopted by my grandparents. My birth mother is my sister now, and my birth father um, lived in the same town I did and still to this day does where I grew up. And so it's just an odd, odd combobulation of family and relationships. And, and God thought it was important to, to bring these people back into my life. Yeah. And so I'm telling you guys, be ready yes. <laughs> for unexpected yeah. things to just pop up and be a blessing. Yeah. Relationships and people that love and care about us, no matter who they are, are a blessing. And they're a yes. gift from God. Yes. And so I'm telling you guys, be ready. I mean, I was literally going to talk about surprises. <laughs> it's an adventure, right? Living the life for the Lord is an adventure. Yes. And anybody who thinks that we're giving up the worldly things to live for him doesn't know who he is. Right. And I'm telling you, if we will just be open and if we will just be thankful yes. when these opportunities come, he will pour out blessings that we haven't even imagined. Right. In Jesus' yes. name. So, yes. We did have a game night. Uh, Peter and Jamie and Jacob and Michael and I played a very interesting game of life. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean Life. And, I won. and Peter won. I was, I was the first runner up. <laughs> P Peter quietly sat in the back and just won the game. <laughs> there were five of us, yep. It was a very cold night. Um, the, the furnace was working that night. <laughs> so it was nice and toasty. We had homemade hot chocolate that we drank all up. Uh, we had snacks and, and uh, we kind of, I think we had, I don't know, I think I brought like 20 games. So we let Jacob pick and so we played uh, life. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I think Jacob and Jamie snuck in a game of Clue before we, before we got everything cleaned up. So <laughs> it was a lot of fun. We'll try again maybe when it's not so cold out <laughs> and have a game yeah, night. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Anyone else? Any prayer requests or any testimonies this morning? Yes. It's neither of those, but um, <laughs> I just wanted to remind everybody that if they wanted to come to our class tomorrow, tomorrow night at 7 we feed you, we teach you, we give you the truth. So, um, I guess please show up if you have the time and you want to have a little adventure every Monday night. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's worth it. It's delicious. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Peter. Um, a couple things. Uh, I have a friend that they just diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor. Uh, she's going in hospital hospice. Uh, she needs prayer for kids. Um, they 
they weren't really ever at the church doors. They were more of a mainline denomination. I, I want to say they were Lutheran or Methodist. Um, but, you know, I, I know she's she's a believer, but her kids are, they lost their dad to cancer, and they might, you know, lose their mom. We'll, we'll see. You know, Lord willing that she can get some healing. And uh, second, I'm feeling that the time is coming close to leave my job and find something else. So I need to, I need prayer for wisdom because uh, I definitely, you know, after you've been someplace for 12 years, you, you aren't just ready to just pick up and go someplace else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Did anyone else make prayer request or testimonies this morning? Yeah, I'm very thankful for the Lord and His blessings and everything He's done for for me and for my family and, and you know, for Kelly. Yeah, she's my family. You know, uh, you know, with, with the new year, people tend to do all these resolutions and all that stuff. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I, I stopped doing that a long time ago because uh, you never stick to them. It's just a matter of changing your, your, your mindset and... and Instead of just thinking of it as a new year resolution or whatever, just I'm going to change my life um, and take it in a different direction because it's, it's to better myself. So anyway, uh, one of the things that I started doing this year that was long due, I finally started a uh, Bible reading plan to read the whole Bible <coughs> in one year. And I found that it's been very helpful because... Uh, I, I try to read it from beginning to end all the way straight through, and I couldn't make it past Genesis 22 and, re- and remember what I had read. Uh, but now, the way that this is structured, it's actually pretty good. And, 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 and I find myself, like I was telling Suzanne uh, just before we started, that very first day that I started reading it, uh, I was reading Proverbs 1. And just reading the first three or four verses, I just had to sit there and and, and be amazed at how wise uh, Solomon was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I cannot believe this. And I have to read it again and read it again. And I was like getting goosebumps and all that. And, and, and I kept reminding myself, you know, if, if you don't have revelation of this word, it's just a book. Yeah. But yeah. then the revelation, how quickly it comes to you as you're reading it, yeah. uh, it, it amazes me. So I'm, I'm very thankful uh, to the Lord for that. And then the other thing is, I'm also very thankful because the, uh, the house process is coming along really good. They haven't uh, dug the hole yet, but uh, as far as some of the things that we were expecting to come at a lower price, we're starting to see that happening. So we might be able to get some things shifted so that we don't have to uh, deal with other things in, in the future. And, you know, it's very exciting and somewhat uh, scary because what we're trying to do is just have this little homestead and have farm animals and things like that. There's so many things that you have to know and, and learn, but I'm, I'm grateful that we have been given this opportunity. Um, we're not going to take it for granted, and, and I know that there's so many blessings that are going to come out of this because the way that I that I see this uh, playing out is we're going to have so much that we're going to be able to start giving it out to people, and that's that's a, a very deep desire that I have in my heart to be able to to do that and help and uh, in that way. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Anyone else this morning? Any prayer requests or any testimonies? Yeah, John. I want to thank the Lord that he touched a friend of mine who was hospitalized in this dire situation for a while. And we really didn't have much time to lift up his name and request prayer for him. So just thank God that we can. Pray one for another uh, to 
doesn't mean we know what the things we really are or everything we know about things, but uh, we should just pray one for another all the time just for opportunities to arise like we've been saying uh, things that just come up and uh, yeah. that will be God's stewards and uh, children and just be in this world doing what he wants done and there's no telling what's going to happen, like you said, you know, just uh, potential unlimited, <laughs> and um, <laughs> then you hear stuff like, uh, it comes out that all of the devices that people are sort of bringing on, the computers and all the electronic devices, uh, that there's stuff built into those, you know, Intel or whatever, that our potential uh, malware misfunctions and all this stuff is just it's like laying there, just ready to happen. You know, we just don't know that man's ways is not perfect. You know, and the stuff that he comes up with is it can just all fall apart. That's uh, it's going to happen. People have their faith in things, and, and that's the wrong place to have it. They're going to find it out. That's right. You know, the security that we really have is in the Lord. We've got it all together. I just praise God that we can walk in victory and confidence and lift up one another and just walk in love. Praise God. Amen. Praise Lord. Yeah. Yeah, she Just uh, continue to pray. I go into these homes with these people that have cancer. One right now has three small children. I went there the other day and she was in bed. Breaks your heart. I mean, I, 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 I don't even know how hard they do to move forward. I mean, you just try to do what you can, and, and they're always so appreciative. And the Lord has always opened up the door for me to almost pray with every single one of them and talk to them. And the lady who can do cancer call uh, text me the other day, and she says, she I don't know how you do it. You do, uh, you know more about these people than even their care providers do. It just seems like you somehow know how to connect with these people and it's just heart to heart it's just God but it breaks my heart you know to see these young families and uh, these people just suffering every day to get out of bed and have to reschedule their appointments and so just as I go into these homes that the Lord would help me to be sensitive to their needs and that he would touch their lives and their children's lives as they're going through hard times Oh, sorry. Yes, Jane. I just want to echo what John just said. I was thinking about it, but I didn't say anything. But we've had the chance here in the last few days to pray with a couple of our grandchildren. You know, even though they're not physically going through hard things, they are mentally going through hard things. And they try to decide what they're going to do with their lives and, and some of the situations around them that they're dealing with. These are hard things for young adults. You know, to try to find their way. And, and they know the Lord, they know, you know, He's with them. I mean, that has been pounded into them from the you know. <laughs> And I got so tickled. We were talking to one of them. And our little six year old, only six years old today, great grandson, he was sitting there and he goes, I know Jesus, He's in my heart. You know, he said, He always is with you. He wants everybody to be nice. <laughs> and I think, you know, that you can teach them so that they, but they still, even as they get older, they need that we are going to your love, we're here for you, we're praying for you, yes. and we just need to keep praying for our family and friends and people who know that are in need. It's so yes. important yes. Yes. to keep praying. Yes. yes. Hold each other up. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Anyone else this morning? All right, let's stand and let's go. Let's stand. Yes. 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 Heavenly Father, we just love you so much. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blessings that you pour out, the unexpected blessings, Lord. We thank you that every day is an opportunity for adventure, Lord, an opportunity for blessings, an opportunity to affect change in the lives of those around us, Lord. It should give us boldness, Lord, to speak life and truth whenever we can. We love you, Jesus. You are in our Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus.
Let healing flow where healing is needed, Lord. Yes, Lord, that by your stripes we were healed. Thank you, Lord, that you are reconciling and restoring relationships, Lord. Jesus, thank you for your favor. Divine favor for those who are looking for the next step, Lord, for the next opportunity, Lord. For direction, Lord. Give your people vision and focus, Lord, to know the path forward, to know the next step, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. And touch that furnace downstairs, Lord. Let it hum and run and work perfectly as it was created to do. Lord, that you touch every person here today, Lord. We've gathered in the name of Jesus in this house of prayer. We've come together to lift you up and magnify your name, to worship and praise the one true God. And right now, Lord, we lay our burdens at your feet, our worries, our cares. We cast them at your feet, Lord, and we trust that you have given us the word of life, that you have given us the word of abundance, that you have given us the word of grace, and we speak to those mountains, grace, grace unto them. Jesus. Jesus. Help us to be reminded that our words have power. Help us to be reminded that the words we speak are life, that the words we speak are hope, and our light in the darkness. Let us remember that we eat the fruit of the words that we speak, Lord, and let us choose life. Give your people wisdom to bridle our tongues and use it only for the purposes of your kingdom. And give your people boldness to speak the word. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Be with us this morning. Have your way in this service, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, just a reminder that if you brought a cell phone this morning to uh, turn it on silent till after the service. And Eastern Gate. We'll press again. The Lord has uh, put a mandate on us uh, for governmental situations to continue to transform things in the, uh, His kingdom to be furthered. Uh, in the spirit realm and also in the, in the physical realm as he wants to align this country back up to his heart. And uh, <clears throat> the Lord was speaking to me through the weekend and stuff. Of, uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a time of healing prayer, uh, healing anointing as we fellowship and pray for people people needs. And uh, to declare now those that are um, dealing with infirmities or sickness or anything that come and we will specifically spend time praying for you and releasing you from any situations that you may be facing and also you can stand in the gap for those that you know are facing situations so we're, we're stepping ahead mm-hmm. stepping ahead mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. and winter jam friday december uh, january 26th it's coming up fast uh, those that are wanting to go let us know quick Everybody can go, they can go, don't let uh, the cost be a situation we have that covered. Uh, invite your friends, uh, family, members, whatever you want to do. Uh, we'll come up with a plan within the next uh, two weeks uh, to see, see how we'll specifically get together. We'll go from there. All right, All right uh, Ron and John, you two want to come take an offering this morning?
looking for the mighty move of God and we thank you Lord that you are one of God's people and we share your presence mighty Lord in the holy name of Jesus Amen Amen Hallelujah. Our special guest, worship leader, Roberto Lucanini. Let's give him a, a warm welcome.
blessings in every area of our lives. Lord, we thank you that you manifest in every way that is necessary as our healer, our deliverer, amen, our prosperity, our provider. You are a great and a mighty God and there's none like you, Lord. We praise you and give you glory this morning for who you are, for all of your mighty acts and your excellent greatness. You are a great and a mighty God, the only true and living God, and we yes, praise Lord. you today yes. in Jesus' name. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, you, Lord. praise, praise you. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated, or you can jump up and down, or whatever you feel like you need to do. Praise God. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I know it's uncomfortable. Yes. I apologize, but uh, we've got yes, Don and uh, Toby been working on it, trying to get things figured out and do what they can do. And, Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's do that right now. Praise the Lord. Father, you know the need that we have, and you knew it before we knew it. So we just trust that you'll be with Toby, help him to find everything he needs, and then be with them as they do the repair, and uh, bless them in the process, Lord. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Well, it is uncomfortable, obviously, that uh, goes without saying, but I've uh, sat and watched football games in a lot worse yeah. conditions, praise the Lord, so yes. hallelujah. But uh, we were unaware of the situation until Mike got here this morning, so there wasn't much opportunity for us to call and, and cancel, and uh, so we'll just tough it out, amen. I'm sure there are people having church around the world in far right. worse yeah. conditions than we're right. experiencing. Although I, I'm sure the people on the internet are wondering what in the world is going on at that place <laughs> with stocking caps and so forth. But I just say this, cool. <laughs> praise, praise the Lord. Amen. So God bless all of you for being here and uh, being willing to, to take a little bad with all the good. Praise God. 
And uh, the good news is we've got some 40 degree temperatures coming this week and I can get the uh, Christmas ornaments out of the yard without having to break them off and that'll be a good thing. The other good news is we had our last Christmas for this past year yesterday. So Sally gets to relax again and just take it easy. Praise the Lord. Well, again, God bless all of you for being here. Thank you, uh, Roberto, for taking the, the lead on the service and uh, all the worship team. And uh, let's, let's get right to it. Praise the Lord. I'm, uh, if you will, Sheila, I want to begin at Colossians chapter 1, and we'll read verses 9 and 10. But while she's bringing that up, I'm going to repeat something I said Wednesday night for those of you that are here. I just want to uh, make the statement to, the, to all of you before I really get into this thing. Now, when Jesus was here on the earth, <clears throat> he was misunderstood. And we know that because nobody recognized who he was, but he was misunderstood in a lot of things that he was doing. And the reason he was misunderstood is because he would take external things, you know, he would teach what we call parables, but it would be like, uh, you know, he'd tell a story about a farmer or he'd tell a story about a fisherman or, and then he would, what he would do is he'd take that external thing that the people knew about and he tried to bring them into an area then where he could uh, explain to them where they could understand that he was dealing with spiritual realities. Right. Now, a lot of times that didn't work. In fact, in a couple of places he said, his disciples said, why do you preach in parables? And he said, so those people that don't want to hear won't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll explain some of that as we go along. But uh, again, I said, people will crucify you not for what you say, but for what they think you said. And when you're speaking by the Spirit, and they're hearing in the natural, they're not hearing what you're saying, they're just hearing what they're hearing. I mean, they've already got a preconceived idea of what it is you're saying, whether that's what you're trying to explain or not is irrelevant to them. Amen. So people are not going to understand what you're saying or what you're talking about if you're speaking by the Spirit, and they're listening in the natural. So that's kind of a, just a preface of where I want to go this morning. And I'll, I'm going to get into some stuff that may be a little bit unusual, but I really do believe that we're living in a time where God's trying to bring us all into the Spirit, our true identity, our true reality. Yes. And it's difficult to do that because we live in a natural world, and so that's what's bombarding us all the time, and we have to try to overcome that, and that's one of the reasons why we renew our mind to the Word of God, which is Spirit. So. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. All right, so let's go then to Exodus chapter 25, verses 8 and 9. Exodus 25, verses 8 and 9. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. So we're living in a time, I believe, of transition when I'm speaking spiritually here. And part of this transition is, is God giving us an increasing awareness of His patterns of material realm, amen, to give us revelation of spiritual truths. He's trying to, to where we begin to see that even in the natural, there's a reflection of the supernatural, of the spiritual. If we would just look for the spiritual rather than being satisfied Amen with the natural. And, and one of those examples is the one that's used here where God tells Moses, He said, I want you to build a tabernacle, but I want you to build it after a pattern. Now the pattern is spiritual, but the building is going to be a material thing. That material thing is then supposed to reflect the spiritual. You should be looking then at this material thing for something spiritual or spiritual truth to come out of it. So we know that in the, in the tabernacle and that uh, God gave Moses uh, the pattern to build, there was an outer court, then there was the holy place or the inner court, 
and then the most holy place or the holy of holies. Those are just different names for the same thing. And here's one thing that he's showing us is that one segment of Christianity, they see and they enter the dimension of the outer court. Now the outer court is where the sacrificial blood was shed and it's where the brazen laver was. So it's showing a certain segment of Christianity, the blood bought salvation and water baptism. Now, how many of you know, and we're not naming names or picking on people or anything else, but there are people that that's, that's it. Yeah. That's their experience, that's their religion, right. and that's where they stop. Yeah. Well, then there's a segment of Christianity that see and enter the dimension of the outer court, where the sacrificial blood, that's the one I'm talking about. And then this, this, there's this part of Christianity that sees further than just the outer court. And they actually go into a second dimension which, according to the pattern of the tabernacle, is the holy place or the inner court. And now we're talking about Pentecost. We're talking about the oil of anointing, the light of the candlestick, which is symbolic of the flow of the, the gifts of the Spirit, because it, it had oil that flowed through it. And then there's the altar of incense, which represents praise and worship. So as great as this is, there is a realm that's beyond Pentecost. And it's represented by the most holy place or the holy of holies. Yes. The, now, it's not to say that either of those two are wrong because they're not. It's just that they're not all. Right. You can't get to the inner court without coming through the outer court. Exactly. But if you stop at the outer court, you're not going to get to the inner court. Exactly. And likewise, there is this holy of holies or the most holy place, which is a revelation of grace. And in other, in other words, without a revelation of grace, you, you can't come boldly into the holy place, into the presence of God. Amen? Well, there was a veil there, and that veil has been rent. But a lot of times, in fact, I'd say much of the time, we still only peek in beyond the veil, but we don't actually enter in. Praise God. Let me, let, let me just show you something. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 14. Now I want to talk about... I know sometimes they say, well, you can be so spiritually minded you're of no earthly good. I think that's bogus. I don't think that's true. Right. You can act too spiritual, but you can't be too spiritual. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So here, here's uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 14. Oh, my dove that art in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. For sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. So I think the Lord is calling us upward. He's calling us to a higher place. Amen. Now, a set of stairs. He talks about these stairs. They consist of a riser and then a tread, followed by another riser and then another tread. And the riser, obviously, is that part that lifts you to the next step. Yeah. The place for your feet, that's higher than the one that you're standing on. Uh -huh. The veil is no longer a barrier. Right. It's a riser. Uh -huh. It's the thing that rises us up to the next step. Right. From Pentecost, from the outer court, so on and so forth. Amen. That's the next step that will take us beyond that to the next realm, to the next dimension. I'm just saying that there's more to receive and experience because of the total provision that has been purchased for us by Jesus Christ. Yes. And that is inner relationship and oneness with God Himself. To where God reigns. To where God is actually doing, amen, everything that needs to be done. Praise the Lord. Now the tabernacle of Moses... It was filled with all kinds of types and shadows. I know when, when I was first saved and, and we were teaching Bible studies in the UPC, and they, you, I, I'm sure Don, some of you others know, you've seen those flip charts with the, the tabernacle. It was fantastic. I mean, there really was some great, great revelation in that. But it wasn't all. It was just, it's just we had some revelation that other people didn't have. And sadly, sometimes we think because we got that, we got all the revelation, and that's a bad thing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But the outer court... Then there's the holy place, and then the most holy or the holy of holies. I've already talked about that a little bit, but the outer court speaks 
of the cross of Christ. It's the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. And then there's the laver, the, the brazen laver, the laver of water. Amen. And that water comes from the smitten rock. Amen. That's water baptism. It's washing by the water of the word. Amen. And that represents, actually, it represents the feast of Passover. Right? The animal's slain. You get deliverance, praise the Lord. Well, then there's a second place, which we talked about already, the holy place. And that points to Pentecost, as I said. And that's the feast of Pentecost. And that's the oil of anointing. The releasing of the gifts of the Spirit. The candlestick, which gives light and, and revelation. Amen. Shines the light on the table of showbread. In fact, look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24. So you get revelation and the and the light, or which represents the revelation. It sh what does it do? It shines so that the, they can see the, the table of shoe bread. Mm -hmm. He said, "For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. The bread showing Jesus, the light. He is the light of the world. All of this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. All of this is about a pattern, and the pattern we see a physical pattern, but the pattern is of something that is spiritual. It's a pattern of Christ Himself. Everything in this Bible yes. is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. So then you have the altar of incense, and that represents the prayer and praise and worship, which is what we've just been experiencing right here in church. It wouldn't be enough for us to come in here and light incense. You know what I'm saying? The incense is for something else. It's not just so you got a good smell in the air. It's a sweet savor in the nostrils of God. I mean, it's our, it, that's what it represents. So let's go to Matthew now, chapter 13, and we'll read verses 16 through 23. Matthew 13, 16 through 23. Now stay with me because I'm, I really am trying to get to some place, but it would be foolish to just jump it to the end without trying to see how it is that God's trying to reveal things to us. There's something dramatic that's taking place in the world and taking place in the hearts and the lives of Christians yes. that are willing to take another step, that yes. are willing to go a little bit further. Yes. Amen? Because God is going to do something in this last day yes. that hasn't been done. Right. And so somebody's going to have to go where they haven't been in order for God to do that. Praise the Lord. And I think that's what He's putting on our heart. And I think that's why the message of grace yes. that we're hearing all around that we never heard, I never heard in my lifetime, no. even though we knew it was out there, it was always kind of yep. coexisting with this, you got to do a bunch of stuff yeah. in order for you to get it. Yep. But that always kept us from the yes. ability to enter into that holy of holies, into that sweet spot, if you will, where God is moving, where God is doing it all. Right. Amen. So he said, but blessed are your eyes, for they see and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Immediately now, just what we've been talking about, Jesus starts with this material thing, something they're all connected with and understand, so that he can bring them into something supernatural, into something spiritual. And so he tells them the parable of the sower, and he said, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and understand if it not, then comes the wicked one, then comes the devil, and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed in the stony ground places the, <coughs> the stony places, excuse me, the same as he that heareth the word, and Anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but endureth for a while, but when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, and by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he now keep remember this because we're going to come back to this in a little bit, but he that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives the seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So here's another uh, perspective of the outer court speaks of the harvest 
that brings 30-fold. The inner court speaks of the harvest that brings 60-fold. But there are some, there are people, there are Christians, there are believers, amen, that are going to experience, know, and understand the hundredfold. Yes. And it's only going to be found in the holy place, in the holy of holies, amen. Yes. So the outer court is just a lot of man-centered activity because the people are bringing the sacrifices. They're doing the majority of everything that takes place in the outer court. The holy place, now here you've got the activity is more uh, concerning God and humans. So somebody had, to, somebody had to light the candlestick. Somebody had to bake the bread. And when that's done, then God manifests in that place. So it's co-ministry. It's God and people working together. Amen. But once you get beyond that veil, once you get into the Holy of Holies, the holiest, the place of God alone, no flesh is seen in that place. Right. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 is a perfect example of that. Zechariah 4, verses 6 and 7. He understand, he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Who art thou, O great mountain, or obstacle, or problem, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof. That word headstone actually translates cornerstone. Jesus, the chief cornerstone of that tabernacle that we've been talking about, that material thing. Amen. Thereof, with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Praise the Lord. So again, you got the outer court, and the outer court represents children. The holy place represents adolescence. But the most holy represents full-grown, mature children of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, let's go to Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Now this is Paul talking. And he said, not as though I had already attained or either were perfect. That word perfect means mature. It translates maturity. So it goes back to what we're talking about. He said, it's not that I've already attained, not that I'm already mature, but I'm following after that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. Into the holiest of holies. Into that place where God alone operates. Amen. Where we just rest in the authority and power and anointing of God himself. He said, I press toward that mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. So. Proverbs 16, verse 25. See, Paul was, Paul was a perfect keeper of the law. Man's religion, right? And he, he says, in, in, well, it says in Proverbs uh, verse 25, there is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Right? Adam and Eve thought, hey, get the knowledge of good and evil, we'll be like God. That's the way that seems right to man. But the result was death. They were separated from God and eventually died a physical death as well. But Paul, as I said, he was perfect in keeping the law. It says, touching the law blameless. But the issue isn't how much knowledge you've got of what's good and evil. That's what Paul had under the law. The issue is, what tree are you eating from? From the tree of life? Or the knowledge of good and evil? So here's the deal. My main goal, personally, and I would hope for most of everybody else, is not to learn how to quit sinning. I want to learn not to give attention to the words of the serpent. He, said, he comes immediately for the word of God. He comes and tries to lie to you and deceive you and get you to look at the natural rather than the supernatural. So I'm not, I can spend the rest of my life trying to stop sinning and I promise you, I'll still sin. 
But if I can stop listening to the voice of the enemy and hear only what God says, my life would be dramatically different. And so would everybody else's that I have contact with. So praise the Lord. Revelation isn't about rehabilitation. It's not about fixing. It's about how Jesus got rid of that old creature and raised him up with a completely new nature, a new creation. Praise the Lord. That's what Jesus did. And that's who we are. Praise God. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. Now Paul's talking about, see, we what religion does is it elevates ministers. It, it elevates preachers. You're all kings and priests. Yes. It's just a role that somebody has and it's it's not elevated. It's not to be exalted or anything else. It's just another guy in the neighborhood. You know, it's just another person in the kingdom of God. It just happens to be their, their job, their call, their whatever. So Paul says this about ministry. He says, us ministers, we're laborers together with God. But you, he said, ye are God's husbandry. You are God's building. So what's he saying? He said, look, as ministers, we're, we're only God's co-workers. We're just working with God. We're outer court stuff, right? We're, we're helping people to come to the knowledge of the truth and so on and so forth. But you are God's garden. Not us. Not the ministry itself. You, the people, the, the believers, you are God's garden. You are God's building. Yes. The ministry is not the building. You are the building. Oh, yes. We as believers are the building, the dwelling place of God. Amen. Right. So God is talking about the thorns that come to choke out the word of God. Those thorns, God removed. He removed those thistles from us. All the cursed things that tried to choke out the good seed of the kingdom. They've been removed from us. Yes. We're not dealing with thorns and thistles anymore. We don't have to earn by the sweat of our brow. We rest in the finished yes. work of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguile Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So we're to rest in the knowledge that we've been brought back to relationship with the Father, that we are one with God. Remember what I said before, there were children, adolescents, and full-grown children of God. And I'm convinced and this is what I think God is really trying to talk to us about. That maturity or perfection that Paul called, I have reached perfection. He's saying I have reached maturity. But that thing that he's talking about is simply getting our soul, which is our mind, to get to where we are as spirits. So in other words, this idea of us becoming perfect or us becoming mature, and that's the holiest of holies. Amen. That is simply getting your soul where your spirit is. Praise the Lord. When the word became flesh, humanity crowned him with a crown of thorns. But the scripture said God crowned him with glory and honor. Praise the Lord. So by replacing the crown of thorns with the crown of life, Jesus made us kings and priests. Amen. Kings and priests unto God so that we can reign in life. So that we dominate life. Life doesn't yes. dominate us. We yes. rule in this earth. Yes. We're not of the world, but we're in the world. Right. And if we're in the world, then we have dominion over the world. Yes. Praise God. So look at John chapter 6, 63. John 6, 63. The word, and it's just telling us, Jesus said the words that I speak, and that's this right here. Their spirit and their life. They're not just language. It's not just verbiage. This stuff is a lie. Because it's spirit. It is. And it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit yes. and their life. Yes. They are alive. Hallelujah. Yes. If you can receive them spiritually, 
Amen. If you're not taking it just carnally as you're reading a book or something, then it will bring life. It'll bring spiritual life into your existence. Praise the Lord. Because look at Romans chapter 12 then and verse 2. Talking about what I just said, that I believe that perfection or maturity is when my soul, my thinking is in total agreement with my spirit. When it gets to working with my spirit, then I'm, I'm operating in perfection and I'm operating in maturity. So he said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Your mind's got to at some point, amen, agree with your spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to show you, this, this is interesting to me because uh, there's all kinds of you know we we live at a time well we know that women have been taken advantage of and women have been you know manipulated and used and so on and so forth and i think a lot of it goes all the way back to the original you know it was eve that ate the apple you know and and you know, the woman you gave me you know all this kind of stuff and it's so it's so natural and no and, and so unspiritual right. Right. so and we've had people actually leave this church because we had women preaching. That's crazy, but yeah, it's true. And, and, and saying that the Lord has spoken. No, the Lord didn't speak. Somebody spoke and tried to say that it was the Lord. Amen. But nevertheless, let me just show you something. It, with this in mind, it's significant to me that it was a woman who first discovered Jesus' empty tomb. Yes. It was a woman who first brought the message of the resurrection. Yes. He is risen. This was from a woman. Yes. Now imagine in the time that they lived, there was no respect. They were property. And yet Jesus chooses a woman to bring the message. The first preaching of the resurrection is from a woman. Yes. Praise the Lord. So. It's meaningful, especially because when you think of it in light of the fact that it was a woman who the serpent came to beguile and to deceive. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking gender right now, okay? So try to just block that out of your mind. We're not talking male, female in the, in the, in the natural way that we think of women and men, okay? Right. But I'm talking about the female that's in all of us. Now you think, oh, now he's going to go get touchy-feely on me. Praise the Lord. No, I'm talking about the word for soul is suke. And that is feminine gender. The woman of our soul. The soul is always referred to in the feminine way. Amen? The feminine gender. Look at it. You can look it up in the Greek. Every time it's feminine. Okay. Now this is not a this is not a diss on women. It's just it's just that we have this weird way of thinking about men and women. And I'm just saying, suke the soul that is in every one of us has a soul. Every one of us has a mind. It's female in gender according to the language, the way that God gave it to us. All right. Look at Psalms 34 and verse two. Now, I'll show you something that just freaked me out. Psalms 34 and 2. This is David speaking. And he says, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. David acknowledges. The, every one of us has a soul and every one of us, that soul is feminine in gender. Praise the Lord. So when you look at Eve in the garden, you can see what happens spiritually in every one of us. The spirit never comes to our man. The spirit. Now, again, don't get offended anybody and think I'm talking about the natural genders here. But the spirit is always referred to in the male gender or in the masculine. All throughout the Old Covenant. All, and everywhere in Hebrew, the Hebrew language, it, it always has a male gender it's always rendered masculine the Holy Ghost he the Holy Spirit right you understand what I'm saying so the truth is there is a she in every he yes. 
Amen. And it also helps to explain how we males in gender can be part of the bride of Christ. Did that ever bother anybody? Well, probably not you women, but it sure bothered me. It made me, I'm trying to figure out, I don't know how this works. I mean, it's not natural. It's spiritual. Praise the Lord. And it's also how the feminine in gender can be sons of God. Praise the Lord. It's not about the gender of our bodies. But it's the description of relationship. I'm a son of God. By being a son of God, and you are a son of God, it makes us a father in authority and in ministry. But it also makes us a bride in relationship and intimacy and marriage to the son. Every one of us. Because he's not talking about this thing. He's talking about what's inside here. Praise the Lord. And I, again, this also, to me, it brings some sanity to what Paul wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. I mean, think about how many... Oh, God, I'm telling you, in Pentecost, this is, it goes crazy. She's got a, that's a Jezebel spirit. Yes, yes. Guys have it the same as girls have it. Yes. It's talking about the soul. It's talking about yes. operating from the natural mind rather than from the spirit. Right. That is right. True. That is right. I, he said, suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Now look at this from the spiritual side of this. And it changes everything. In fact, in another place he says, you know, women, just shut up. Suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. This is what some people have gotten all offended about women preachers. It's just, it's because they are totally carnal. Like it or not, that's the reality. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp. And he said after that, in another scripture, he says, ask, wait till you get home and ask your husband. Why? Probably because the husband's not in church. But, but no, I'm just saying. He says, ask your husband. Now think of this again. Think of this spiritually. Let's quit looking at it from the natural. Because this is spirit and life that we're looking at. The words. Amen. Everybody's been in a service where the masculine, the spirit, right? Was stifled. And the feminine, the suke, the intellect, the mind, the natural, was speaking. Amen. Words that were soulish. Words that were just human. Words that were just natural. It was a... It was like a lesson without any spiritual power to it at all. Give me five points, you know, to, to prosper or whatever it might be. You know what I mean? That's what we're talking about here. Where the, the suke, the, the soul, the mind, dominated the service instead of the spirit. The masculine. We're not talking about men and women. We're talking about intellect or spirit. So what Paul may have been saying is he doesn't want the soul, he doesn't want the mind to usurp authority over the spirit. Praise the Lord. It's what Jesus was talking about in the very beginning. It, if you had ears to hear, in other words, if you, were, if you were hearing from the Spirit, you know what I'm talking about. But if your hearing is soulish, you're not hearing anything I'm saying. Or what you hear is not what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. Okay, so he says, look, let's just take it a little bit further. So he says, ask your husband. Who's your husband? The Spirit of Christ who lives in you. That's what he's saying. Don't listen to the natural. If you've got a problem, ask your spirit. Ask your husband. Does it, doesn't it make more sense? It makes a heck of a lot more sense to me than the, whenever you've got contradictions in the Word of God, you're not understanding what you're reading. And so what we've done a lot of times is we just don't read it anymore because we can't quite figure out how to make sense out of it. So we just quit dealing with it. Because we know it can't be right. It just doesn't make sense based on everything else we know about the Lord. That He's going to 
diminish a woman or he's going to hold a woman back or he's going to say when he when we know he 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 yes. treated him just as equal as anybody else yes. in fact it even tells us in heaven there is no male or female right. so he's not dealing with us that way so if your soul needs to know something if you lack wisdom he says you can ask of god who gives to us freely that's what he's talking about so the whole point then if that's true, and I believe it is, I think it's just obvious once you, you know, once you start seeing that and start talking about it, it makes everything else seem stupid. Yeah. So the whole point in the garden would have been for Adam, speaking of the masculine, representing the spirit, to protect his woman, his soul, his thinking. How did that get messed up? He, he let his soul yes, he listen to the enemy yes, instead of does. going by what the Spirit of God had already yes, told him. Yes, he was the yes. child of God, that he was one with God. Yes. That's the battle we're in every yes. single day, all day long. Yes. And we're wanting to blame Eve yes. for eating the fruit. <laughs> hey, Adam and Eve were one. Yes. Adam just let his female, his suke, dominate his masculine spirit. Yes. So Eve ate. Yes. And Adam was just as guilty. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's how God looked at it. He didn't see it as two different individuals out here operating. He saw it as yeah. intellect yeah. and spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Whichever one dominates is the one that's going to be the reality or, or going to live out that reality. Praise yeah. the Lord. Glory. Praise God. So Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. <coughs> I mean, I, when I think of this, I, I just think, you know, there are churches, oh, even in the church that I got saved in, they had a side for, all, for women and a side for men. <laughs> so it, it's so crazy. And there are religions that have actually the women are in one section, the men in the other section. Yeah. And the women just sit there. And, with all of the Spirit of God available to speak and to, to share, and we're just saying, don't want to hear that, that's a woman. You idiot, that's your woman talking. That's the woman in you doing the talking. And I'm not talking, again, I'm not speaking gender. It's just so easy to get caught up in that and think, well, now he's, he's disrespecting us that way. No, I'm, I'm saying that they're just not even, we're not even talking in the same reality here. There's as much woman in me talking about my mind and my intellect as there is in any woman in here. It has nothing to do with my sexuality. It has to do with how we think. Your thinking is feminine. Doesn't make it, you know. I know we're just saying it, and it's almost like, well, come on, that doesn't sound right. It's like you're picking on. No, I'm not saying that at all because you have the same masculinity yeah. in terms of the spirit that I have. Yes. Otherwise, you could not be a son of God, and I could not be a bride of Christ. Yes. Can you see how where God's wanting to take us yes. to some place we haven't been? That's right. Into something that will totally change yes. our future. Yes. That would really make us operate from a spiritual reality yes. instead of this same old, same old stuff, thinking that, well, you know, I do have the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues, so I'm better than those people in the outer court. Yes, you've got some revelation, but you you still aren't where he's trying to get you to. Yeah, right. You know, just because you're ahead, ahead in the race and there's already been one guy that passed, the, you know, you're just still, you're you're, you're just a different last. You're just a different loser. Because yeah. the one that already crossed the finish line is the winner. I mean, I, I don't get any great thrill out of being third in a four-man race. Or in an eight-man race. I want to be one. Yeah. I mean, if I'm going to take the effort and the energy and the strength and the, and the you know, the, the, the discipline to, to race and to be, I want to win. Or else I wouldn't be in the thing. I just watch and clap for the one that does win. But that's what religion has done. It's told us third's good. Yeah. Not if it, not if it's three places away from where I should be in God, where I can experience everything that God wants us to have. And why don't we see everything God has given us in this Word? 
Because the word that he gave us was spirit, and we're reading it carnally. Yeah. And we're, we're satisfying ourselves with yeah. things that are not, we're not to be satisfied with. Just as I said, just right. with this, yes. this one example tells me volumes yes. of what's going on in our life. Yes. So all this time we're thinking Eve's the guilty one. No. We're all guilty. We all got the Eve in us. Yes. We all have the suke. And so just that one revelation tells me how many other things. Because see, when I come to... Uh, Timothy here, where Paul's saying, suffer a woman to be quiet. I didn't know how to I didn't know how to say that's not right. All I could do is say that can't be right because right. Jesus chose women yeah. to be the first to minister. He he treated yeah. them as equals. He never said anything negative about them. In fact, he exalted them. He said that there's no male or female. So I know just in my own mind, there's a volume of, uh, of evidence here that that can't be the way he really thought. So then I got to think, well, is it cultural? Is it? But it's in the Bible for crying out. There must be a reason. You see what I mean? So you can't, it's hard to argue with somebody because you're trying to argue naturally. You're trying to argue from a natural point and there's no spiritual way of getting that truth out unless you go back to the spirit. Now, somebody that's only hearing naturally isn't going to accept it either, but that's, I don't care. I, this is about me. I want to know why, you know? I want to understand it. So how many other things, how much other truth is there here that we don't see because we're, we're even though we have spirit filled, we're still hearing with our soul. We're still evaluating with our soul. So for the, for the earnest expectation of the creature, waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. I think that's what this is about. Everything is waiting for us to start operating strictly yes. by the Spirit. Yes. To where we don't let the soul, the natural, dominate us. Right. That would be a manifestation of the sons of God. And that only happens when we go past the veil. When we get in yes. there and come boldly to the throne of grace. When yes. we actually begin to operate, not by might or by power, right. but by your Spirit. Grace, grace. Yes. God just did this, and I, all I got to do is accept it and receive it. And all of a sudden, God can do anything. Yes. Because it's not yes. dependent on me anymore. It's not dependent on me being good enough. It's not dependent on me being faithful enough. It's not being dependent on anything except me accepting what God has said. Praise the Lord. So the Spirit manifests. Amen. The Spirit rules. It dominates. Praise the Lord. So, I'll wrap up here. One more scripture and then we'll finish. But God hasn't brought us to the end of one realm to leave us there. That's right. God is revelation Himself. Yes. And it will, the revelation will never end. That's right. We'll just get more and more and more. As long as we're willing to take another step forward, there'll be another revelation. There'll be another opportunity to receive more of God. Yeah. So He didn't bring us to this to leave us. He hasn't brought us to these steps, to this place that seems like a veil, to frustrate us. But He's brought us to this place so that our spirit will stir us up to say what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, uh, again, Sheila, verses 12 through 14. Not as though I had already attained, either were already mature, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth to the next step, to beyond the veil. I press toward that mark, toward that location for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. The pattern. The reality of the Spirit is what that pattern is about. Seated with Him in heavenly places. That heavenly place is a spiritual reality. Praise God. Grown sons. One with the Father. You know what they say if you want to get healthy? Take the stairs. (laughs) Praise the Lord. I'm taking the stairs. But we say we just move on up. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, Tammy. 
giving me something, and that I felt like I was, because it was about having eyes to see, you know, dear God, in the eyes. So I, I had invited him to church, and I thought God was trying to tell me something to tell him. And when he didn't show up, I just kind of slumped it off. But when I sat down before he started preaching, I was impressed to just write down what he told me on my way here today. And it's, I think it's for everyone to hear. He said, he who has eyes to see and ears to hear, let him hear. Let his eyes be opened and his vision restored. Yes. I have things to reveal yes. to you that you need. Things you can't even begin to imagine. Yes. Things you must enter into for all to be fulfilled. The things I've purposed to, from the foundation for each of you to be completed. For it is finished. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think the devil didn't want us to have church this morning. You know, I heard somebody say just here a couple weeks ago, uh, we'll fight him till hell freezes over. And then we'll fight him on the ice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Next week we wear ice cream. There you go. Hey, God bless all of you. Take your feminine and masculine with you and go in the power of his authority. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.